What I think we're looking at, if the exit polls as they have so far proved to be fairly accurate, is that he may not need to involve himself in a formal coalition the way he has had to for the past five years with the Liberal Democrats. He may be in a situation where he is so just shy of a majority that he can have a working majority on an issue by issue, week to week, month to month basis, either with the handful of Liberal Democrats, uh, one or two UKIP members, and the um, Ulster Unionists who may get something in the order of nine seats. I think that would be his preference because although on paper that's a less secure situation, it does keep the Conservatives fully in the driving seat. And then he can sort of pick and choose his moment for when he wants to try for that majority again in a forthcoming election, which would probably be in the not too distant future. Yeah, uh, that scenario though, Patrick, forgive me, doesn't sound like a durable or lasting government. So at first blush, a Conservative victory seems to be good news for the city, for business, for deregulation. But he's going to struggle under that sort of scenario with a minority Conservative government, yes? Absolutely. I mean, yes, the pound and, and the city are going to be pleased that David Cameron remains prime minister, given that the alternatives uh, are obviously so much worse from a business point of view. But however, as you say, it will be a precarious position going forward. The market loves certainty above all else. It will not have certainty. It will have definite uncertainty. Um, and that means that it is simply that the clock will be ticking the entire time, be running down on this new next government. In the short term, however, the one balancing factor is that it appears most likely that Nick Clegg will resign as the Liberal Democratic leader tomorrow. Ed Miliband will either resign or maybe pushed, which means that for the foreseeable future, in the near term, both the Liberals and the La uh, Liberal Democrats and the Labour Party will be focused on selecting a new leader and doing a lot of bloodletting themselves over their disappointments this evening. So Cameron, I think, will have a surprising bit of breathing room in the immediate, but that will end, that will dissipate that breathing room, and at that point, the markets, I think, will start to get very nervous, unless, unless, in the coming weeks and months, Cameron and his team prove so competent and so politically successful that the polls show that, yes, if they go to the poll, go to the electorate again in six, nine, 12 months, they'll come back with a true majority. Yeah, somebody told me uh, earlier today that Labour picked the wrong Miliband brother to lead the party. Right. And it should have right. been David oh, as opposed to Ed. What are your thoughts on that? No. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I was certainly uh, not one of the only wise people with hindsight. There were many of us at the time who thought that the Conservatives had been given a gift by the Labour Party when they chose Ed rather than David. But, of course, David at the time was too connected to the Blairite faction of the party, uh, Tony Blair being toxic within his party, if not necessarily toxic around the world politically. And so... Ed was the, uh, the change. He was the reaction against the Blairites and the, the reputation at that point of Tony Blair. So it's going to be very interesting. If he goes, is, does it become a back-to-the-future fight between the old left of the party and the new Labour Blairite types of, of the 90s and the past decade? Or is the party able to coalesce around a newer, younger leader who's trying to be sort of post-Blair, Blair, post-Brown, post-Miliband.